We're going to be tying a snook fly today. Um, pretty simplistic as we can make it. Just uh, four, four materials. Okay, so we're going to be using a little different thread this time. I'm using a monofill clear. This is just basically a fly line or a, uh, a piece of monofilament, a very thin piece of monofilament, 0.006. Right here in the good old US of A. I'm going to lay, uh, this is going to be very hard to see because it's, it's monofilament. It's pretty clear. I'm laying it right in the middle of the shank of the hook. And I'm going to carry it back, hold my thread at a, four, my tag end at a 45 degree angle. What that does is it'll lay those uh, thread wraps one right next to the other. Okay. So I'm going to go back to just before the hook point. I'm going to cut off that tag end. Now I'm going to go carry it back to the hook point and that'll cover up that little piece of tag that was there. All right. Now, for our hook, we're using a Gamagatsu SL113H in a one knot. We're after snook, so I like a bigger gap on the hook, or gape, as you prefer. Other hooks will work, but that this is my preferred hook. I think they're a little sharper point. Okay, so we're back here. Now we're going to use the Ostrich Hurl in tan. This is going to be my tail fibers. So I'm just going to pull out my little piece of ostrich hurl. I'm going to get a few strands here. Let's see, what do I have? Get them a little longer. I'm going to take, if I can count these, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to try to get six of them for my tail feathers, okay? That's going to be my tail. It's going to stick out of the back. We're going to go about three hook shanks. Kind of hard to see. I'm trying to do this so you can see real well. I'm going to call that one just because it's kind of a little hard to work with. That's two. I'll go back here where we were. That's three. Okay. So I'm going to hold it right there and I'm going to cut it right at that point. Usually I would cut slightly above it. I'm going to cut it right there because I really want it to be like, I don't know, two and three quarters perhaps. So I'm going to lay that here. This ostrich hurl is a great product. It, it'll, it'll lay down once it's flat, and, but yet it, it's got those little teeny tiny little almost marabou to it. So it really moves well in the water. So I'm going to take this, try to show you. I'm laying it up about halfway up the hook shank from the point of the hook, okay? I'm going to tag that in. What I did there, if you didn't see, I pinched the thread in my hand, and the other side is now loose, and I'm that allows me to be able to pull it straight down on top of the material on top of the hook. So I'm going to then tag that down and I'm not worried about that material. I'm just going to leave it lay on the hook. I don't need to cut it off. Just kind of make sure it's tagged down on there. Come back here. Now, something I like to do, I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to go under it a couple times almost like building a little post back there. What that'll do, it'll aid in keeping it from wrapping around the hook when you're throwing this. Now once these fibers get wet, they're going to lay down and you won't have the problem. But I just kind of like to make that little few wraps right back there behind it. Okay, now I'm going to carry my thread forward to about halfway down the shank. Okay, I'm halfway from the hook point to the hook eye. Now I'm going to take my Deadly Dazzle material. Misty Camel, Deadly Dazzle. It's a, uh, who's it made by? Misty Camel's our color. Yeah, Deadly Dazzle is, is the name of the company. So I'm going to take it. I've got it out of the package here. And I'm just going <clears> to <throat> kind of get equal parts let's see here trying to measure this out a little bit now i don't want this again to go over the length of the the entire length of the tail so i'm gonna as i'm doing this i'm stroking it back so i can see where that's going to fall i want it to be just short of the tail okay so that's about correct this is about if i could tell you half the width of a pencil that's what we're looking at okay so I'm going to take that and I'm going to bend it over so I get the other half on this side. 
That, this is where I'm cutting my material, okay? Because we're gonna bend this over the fly. So I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna cut it off right there. Now, I know that nature's not perfect. So instead of leaving that straight there, I'm just gonna loosely hold it in my hand and pull these fibers out a little bit on this side. The other side, they already were a little loose. So I, because when I fold this over, I want it to appear the same on both sides, okay? So now I've got fibers out of both sides. I'm gonna try to, again, bend it in half, make sure I get about the halfway point here. Looks to be about right there. I'm gonna lay that right on top. I can still see I'm a little short of the, of the tail feathers that I tied in, that's what I want. And I'm gonna come over again, I'm pinching my thread and this is now loose. Okay, and I'm just draping it over the top of the fly and I'm gonna pull straight down. Now that tack it right on top of the fly, okay? I'm gonna make another wrap that I'm gonna take this material and I'm gonna pull it right back over the top. Now I'm gonna go right over that material. So I've just locked that in on top. You can kind of see how it's built a little bulk up there on top. That's exactly what I wanna do. I'm gonna tack it two more thread wraps and I pulled hard, okay? I'm gonna turn my fly upside down and I'm gonna tighten my vise so it'll stay up there for me. I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the bottom, okay? I'm gonna grab my feathers, get about that same length. I'm gonna fold it over. I see where I need to cut it, right here. Cut that off. I'm gonna pull some of these fibers out because nature's less perfect than me. I'm just kinda gonna splay these feathers in the middle as best as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect here, okay? I'm just gonna stick that right through the bottom, halfway. I'm gonna take my thread loosely. I've grabbed it between my feather fingers. I'm gonna pull straight down, make one more wrap. Now I'm gonna take these here Splay them out to the side, push them back, and I'm going to tack them in. Kind of looks like it's a little, oop, little messy. I hate when my thread breaks, but that can happen. So I'm just going to take more thread. I'm going to come in under here. This is actually a good thing to show you. Once I get that wrapped in, as long as everything hasn't come flying off the hook, I'm gonna travel straight back. I wanna cut off this tag end. Don't need that on there, it's just gonna get in the way. Make sure my feathers are still splayed back, split in the middle, as best as I can anyway. Come back over the top of that. Oh, look at that, see that? It did let go, okay. All's not lost. Right back into it. It's splayed, stroke it out, grab it, tack it down, bring it back, tag it. It's going to look a little bushy. When we get all done, it's going to be just fine. So don't worry about the bush that you're seeing here. It's going to come out just dandy. Get on top of that, tack it down again. Okay. Pull any loose fibers out of there that you need to. Make sure everything's good and copacetic. Now I'm gonna take my thread in front of that. I'm gonna turn this over one last time. Make sure my hook is straight. You can see how it's kind of bushed out beyond them. That's okay, I'm gonna cut those off. It's gonna come out just fine. Take one more piece here. Separate those. That's about the thickness I want. This I want a little bit shorter than the piece I've got on there. So I'm just gonna measure it, hard to see there, about halfway of it. You can tell I don't have quite as much material. Measure the distance. Cut it off. Oop. Lay it right on top, 
tack it in, come back, lay it right over the top. And looking good. Now we're going to take our UV Foxy one and a half inch wide brush. This is Enrico Puglisi, the EP brush. Okay. I think that's what fell on the floor on me. A little brush fell on the floor. Let me pick that up real quick. If you can see that long silver piece, that's the, the metal that holds the uh, brush together. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. You're going to notice I'm using a different pair of scissors. I don't want to use my fine scissors on this heavier stuff. So I'm going to cut off most of that, leave just a teeny little bit of that sticking out. And that's what I'm going to tack in here. Okay, I'm going to go right back on top where the uh, material, material that I previously laid on is. I'm going to tack it in. I'm going to go behind it. This is what I call a locking wrap. And I'm going to come right back in front. Okay. I'm going to carry this forward to the just a, a couple wraps before the hook eye. I'm just going to hackle this around, palmer it around as it goes, stroke it back, make sure those fibers are going back for us. This has a little bit of UV flash built into it as well as our uh, body material. Carry that forward. We're just building a small head. This will push water really well. Snook and feel this fly coming. Carry it right to the hook eye. We get there. We're going to lock it in. Front, back. I'm going to cut that off and get that metal out of there. Make sure you cut this pretty close because you don't want that metal to stick up and, and hurt your, uh, nick your, your line as you're fishing. Then I like to pull it back and make sure that that metal is, is not in the way. I'm going to make a little bit of a head here. Grab my whip finishing tool. Finish it. Cut that off. I like a little bit of red at the head whether that's showing them a gill plate or a fish that's bleeding and it is uh, an opportunity to take an injured prey. I don't know, but whatever, it works. It works for me. Take a little bit of head cement. Gotta pull this back, just touch it. It doesn't take very much. And now we need to build our body a little bit better because it's kind of fuzzy wuzzy looking okay so I'm just gonna stroke it back a little bit if you've got a little comb you can use a comb you can use a uh, mustache comb um, you can use your fingers you can use a bodkin just kind of stroke it back don't worry stuff comes out we're going to cut all this down anyway. Just kind of get it all going back here. All those loose fibers out of the way. Now, just kind of going to pull it to the side a little bit. Get those loose fibers out of the way. Pick up my material scissors. I'm just going to build a little bit of a body. I'm going to shape it a little bit as I can trim it. Okay. Now what I've done is given it a little more definition. Now I need to do that on the bottom. This is a great fly if you're casting into the mangroves. It pushes water well. And it bulks up pretty good. But yet, without a, a lead eyes on it, 
and there are many flies for snook owl tie with lead eyes. Just depends on what I'm doing with it, where I'm fishing, what I want it to do for me. I don't know if you can see all that flash in there or not, but it's it's pretty good looking. You know, and we just trim this body down. We want it to look pretty much like a minnow when we're all said and done. Trim the sides. Just want that profile. Over the top of the hook. Don't want those fibers too long. Still have my ostrich hurl coming out of the back. Meaty little fly. That ostrich in there, I don't know if you can see it or not, slightly darker than the rest of the fly. That's its lateral line. So it really gives us a great little profile. You know, you, you, the danger of trimming is you can always go too far, right? So get it to where you, you want the bulk to be. You want it to push water from the front. Have a, the silhouette of a, of a minnow along the back. I just don't like a bunch of little loose fibers sticking out all over the place, but you don't have to be that picky. The fish are not. When this gets in the water, it's going to lay down, and that's really what you're going to, what the fish are going to see and feel right there. And that's a minnow body. That's what you're going after. So you don't want too many fibers, but you also want to leave it enough to be the body, you know. And I kind of go a little flat on top because. Most of the minnows, especially the mullet, kind of are flat on top, you know? So build your body, get it good, right to the hook point, and uh, I'll make it a little flat on the sides, and look at that. We've got a little bullet head snook fly. If you want, you can go ahead and glue some eyes in there. I don't. I don't really think you need them. This, it happens really fast underwater. These fish see this. If they, from a distance, see that looks like food, Man, they come in quick and they grab it. I don't think eyes make all the difference in the world. Sometimes, maybe. Most of the time, not. And there we have it. We are done. There's a quick, easy little snook fly. Won't break the bank buying your materials. Hey there, it's Joe Simons, one of the co-founders here at Salt Strong, and have you claimed your free pack of these irresistible Slam Shady Paddle Tail Lures. We designed this lure with over 12,000 serious inshore anglers, including many full-time guides, to go out there and catch more redfish, more speckled trout, more snook, more flounder, more inshore saltwater slams. And if you want a free pack to try out a sample yourself, click down below right now. We have one free pack per angler while supplies last. Click down below right now.